Well, good morning or good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, ATD Transforming Colleges, Transforming Communities. We are so delighted to have you here today. Um, as you're coming in and getting situated, we welcome you to introduce yourself in the chat. If you'd be willing to share your name, position, and institution in the chat, we'd be glad just to know um, who's with us today. But we're so um, grateful for you um, to take the time to join us. Um, we also just want to um, send a note of appreciation for those of our colleagues who are in Florida. Um, our thoughts and our best wishes are with you um, as you're weathering this um, challenging time. We will um, be recording today's webinar as well. Um, so you may see the red dot there um, indicating the recording. Um, so we will send this recording out after today's um, session. So you're welcome to rewatch this or um, share the recording with some of your colleagues if you would like to do so. Um, so appreciate you being here with us today. Um, this is the culmination of ATD's first ever network week. Um, so often, day in and day out, we spend a lot of time focused on the work ahead and what we need to do to um, increase student success, promote equity. But really what we're doing is taking this week to pause, to celebrate, to recognize the wonderful accomplishments that we have done along with our colleagues um, throughout the nation. Um, ATD's network is made up of over 300 colleges in 45 states in the District of Columbia. So this has been a wonderful opportunity to um, celebrate the work that we've been doing along the way. Some of the themes that we've been focused on, as you see on this slide, have to do with who is in um, ATD's network, how they've been going about um, the process of transformation at their institutions, um, what they're learning from that work, and also how they're innovating and planning for um, the road ahead. So it's been a wonderful week for um, ATD network colleges to reflect on the changes that they've been making along the way. Um, but really what we want to do today as we are um, excited to welcome our panelists is to hear a little bit about um, what that process has looked like and then to share for those of you who aren't currently participating in ATD's network or thinking about re-engaging with the network if you've been with us before, how you might go about doing that. So um, we have the pleasure of hearing from um, a couple colleges today, as well as many of um, ATD's leaders on this process. To kick us off, I am pleased to introduce um, Dr. Monica Parrish-Trent, our Vice President of Network Engagement at Achieving the Dream to kick us off. So Monica, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Knight, and welcome everyone. I am absolutely delighted to introduce today's panelists, and I'm gonna begin with Dr. Valmage Towner, the proud president of Oklahoma Community College in my granddaddy's home state of Mississippi. Uh, Dr. Towner is a proud alum of Oklahoma, and he has served as president since 2013. He is also superintendent of Oklahoma Early College High School, and HBCU, Kahoma is transforming the lives of residents in this Mississippi Delta region through President Towner's leadership. We're also delighted to have Tracy Dryden, Associate Vice President of Institutional Effectiveness at Western Technical College in Wisconsin. A native of La Crosse, Wisconsin, Tracy has worked within Wisconsin's technical college system since 2002. She leads Western strategic planning process, institutional research, performance excellence efforts, and is also responsible for college accreditation and programs and services evaluation. Dr. Towner, we're gonna to start with you today, and I'm going to invite you to share how you have taken advantage of and really leaned into the equity work as far as supporting students at Cahoma College. I apologize. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for the introduction. Am I able to be heard? I guess I am at this time. Um, we are, I am excited to be here and um, really a little a little nervous because we've had a number of things to happen this morning on, uh, at Cahoma, uh, located in Clarksville, Mississippi. We've had power surges and, and the internet is going in and out. We're located in the heart of what we call the Delta uh, geographically near the Mississippi uh, River in the northwestern part of, of the state, about an hour south of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we are an HBCU. We are the uh, what, what the lone HBCU in our 15 community college network in Mississippi. And we are also the smallest and the youngest. Uh, we were created in 1949. Uh, one twofold premise of this college being created, one was in regard to uh, educating farm workers, quite frankly. And secondly, Mississippi was anticipating 
1954 Brown versus Board of Education decision. And so this college was set up in anticipation uh, of that. So uh, again, excited to be here. We, we're excited about what's going on at Coleman Community College. We're just under uh, 2,000 students, 1,800 plus students this semester. We've had some enrollment challenges due to COVID, as well as due to um, a depopulation of the area. Uh, area is, uh, again, bordered by the Mississippi River. So those of you that may be familiar with Mississippi River, a lot of the geographical locations along the Mississippi River from New Orleans up to Minnesota, a lot of those towns and communities are, are challenged. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we, are, we have experienced two years of consecutive enrollment growth. Uh, most recently, this semester, a 22, a 20 plus percent increase. And we feel not only good about the increase, but we feel good that we know how the increase has transpired. And I'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. We are over 95% African-American. Um, uh, most of our students uh, come from a five county region that we have been assigned to. And most of those students come from schools that unfortunately have uh, D or less ratings as, as school districts. And when I say that, that's not to, to speak condescendingly about our feeder school districts, but it kind of, it shows the work that we have to do. And we also believe that we have a part in helping those school districts uh, at the high school, at the K-12 level improve. But we receive those students. Many times we provide dual enrollment uh, courses to those students, as well as we receive those students as full-time uh, students with, with the college. Uh, we have, since joining ATD, we focus on orientation and advising, and we've provided what we call a holistic uh, support for our students. We've provided uh, laptops. Uh, we have provided and hired counselors and tutors uh, that were that have been earmarked, or I should say assigned specifically to help students in gateway courses, primarily, as well as other subject skill courses that we have identified where students are having uh, verifiable challenges in. We have created not only uh, the lap, not only provided laptops, we have also provided sup supplemental instruction. Teachers have been able, or they have been willing to hear uh, the, the, the call to, to go above and beyond the norm. And so uh, with providing the laptops as well as providing the uh, counselor support and tutor, tutoring support and the supplemental uh, instructional support, we have made students know that we are available 24 hours a day to provide support to students because what has happened during the pandemic, uh, we went from roughly 10% of our students taking online courses to nearly 50% of our students taking all online courses. And previously students didn't perform as well collectively in online courses. So we knew that we had to provide, we had to provide uh, support uh, for, for those students. And we've done that with some of the things that we just mentioned. Uh, these, these counselors provide face-to-face -face tutoring uh, as well as online help uh, for students. Uh, we have used incentives to help increase or I should say entice students to participate uh, with the offerings that we have. And we are pleased in the numbers that we've been seeing along, uh, along that line as well as, as, as it relates to students participating uh, with, the, with the services that we provide uh, for their enhancement. Uh, we have also built, we believe, a cultural evidence based upon you know, after joining um, ATD. Before joining ATD, we lived in what I call hunch land. We, we did things based upon how we felt that they would, uh, how, they, how we felt they would work out, or um, we didn't know if they would work out. We just, we, we, we knew that we needed to do things. We knew that we always had a, a retention challenge, uh, more so than a recruitment challenge. We had a retention challenge. And so, Achievement Dream has helped us uh, build a culture of evidence uh, uh, that's centered around equity uh, because we look at things such as individual course success. We look at equity gaps um, based upon the different 
stratified parts of our student population, whether it's race, gender, full-time, part-time, traditional. Uh, we were able, when we do, when we've done that, we've been able to identify unique trends, such as we just recently uh, were able to see that our students that are age 30 to 34 are having the most trouble in a number of our gateway courses. And we, you know, we don't know exactly why uh, we have some thoughts as to why, but since that group, that age group is, they're experiencing trouble based upon their GPAs or their midterm grades and GPAs um, each semester, we have up or increased offerings to those students and the appeal uh, of offering uh, services to those students. So we've also created a student success and equity uh, uh, center. We have uh, hired a director of teacher and um, teacher and student learning. I probably didn't, I didn't say the name correctly fully, but we also are also, we also have hired a data analyst uh, to come on board to look more specifically at the data that we have that's provided to us through our, um, through our dashboard that we have available to us. Uh, and so uh, a lot has been done in regard to, again, building a culture of evidence. Um, we also listen to what students tell us, students provide feedback to us. We have focus groups, where they can be dormitory students or athletes or students that are in a certain field, health sciences or in, or they're in mathematical, math and math sciences. Uh, different groups of students give a, can provide feedback to us through a questionnaire that we have um, developed and we provide to students. The dashboard has been extremely helpful for us. Uh, departmental deans and chairpersons use those uh, the information that uh, emanates from the dashboard. And so the cultural evidence has been increased greatly since joining Achievement Dream. I should say lastly, uh, in my introduction and comments, uh, we have been able to leverage our relationship with Achievement Dream through the, through the coach that we have, as the data coach that we have, as well as our um, overall coach, I call her, uh, Dr. Taylor, that we have. Um, and they are very well experienced, very well exposed, and uh, they um, pretty much challenge us a good deal to really focus on data and doing things based upon data. And we're just, we're just according to the data. We're just the teaching delivery according to the data. We're just the support systems that we provide uh, towards the data. And I mentioned earlier that we have this director for Center for Teaching and Learning and Excellence in place. And this is, she's been on about a month. So we're really excited about her working with our faculty and staff uh, particularly our faculty, as, as, um, as they think through how to provide educational services in a, in a good way, in an efficient way, I should say. So we're no longer in a world of hunch, hunch world, a hunch world, I call it. We're doing everything based on uh, uh, data. And uh, we, we were ex we're excited and think we've benefited greatly from having achieved the dream uh, to be with us and to be exposed to some of the things that we have learned uh, from other schools as being a part of the network. And this sums up, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Towner. And we've had a chance to communicate um, over the last four years as, you, as you've done your work. And I really appreciated the comments around the data and analytics. And I know you worked with your coach to build a Tableau dashboard in order to share with your faculty and your colleagues so that they could get a more uh, accessible and comprehensive look at the ways in which your students are performing. You also mentioned Dr. Jackie Taylor, who's been providing a lot of support with your teaching and learning. And we're so excited for you to have your Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence director on board as you've talked about over the years, the prominent role that faculty play in supporting your students, both inside and outside of the classroom. So thank you so much for sharing. Next, I'd like to welcome uh, Tracy, who's going to share Western Technical College's story. We're also honored to have President Roger Stanford with us as well. Uh, Tracy has really been with uh, Western Technical for a number of years and has a great bit of insight to share about their journey as they've been in the AT network for 10 years and also have leader college status. So Tracy, I look forward to your presentation. 
Thank you. Uh, I believe we have a slide to show, but if we can't show that, I'll just talk through it. Um, we are uh, located in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and um, we're part of a uh, 16 college technical college system. We're also located right on the Mississippi River, although we're, I think we're up um, at the maybe the wider, maybe cleaner part of it. Um, and so our institution is um, positioned in a large district. We serve 11 counties. And in addition to the main campus in La Crosse, Wisconsin, we have uh, several uh, regional learning centers that serve the, the counties that are out further than La Crosse. Uh, about 17% of our student body are students of color, and we see um, some major demographic sh shifts coming our way as our Hispanic uh, student population is increasing in our high schools. Uh, we joined Achieving the Dream in 2014 after about two years of um, exploration that started with a group of faculty and frontline student services folks as part of a, a Title III grant that uh, we received. And there were some initial pivotal pivotal events that happened. And one was a leaky pipeline demonstration in 2015. Uh, you can see a visual of a leaky pipeline. That's not the Mississippi leaking out. It's actually the visual that helps us recall that students are vulnerable and um, there are points at which they struggle and, and leak out. And our, our goal here is to plug those, those areas where they leak out. Uh, we've been a leader college since 2019 and Achieving the Dream has really helped us uh, do a lot of different things um, over the years. So I'll, I'll share um, some of the, some of the um, major focus areas that we've had uh, since joining Achieving the Dream. And they really did start with this leaky pipeline concept where we had our first data summit. We were coached on how to do a data summit. And we brought in 30 students and filled our, uh, our conference hall full of uh, college-wide um, em employees. And our students walked through and demonstrated what a leaky pipeline looks like. <clears throat> and then they joined us at our tables and we gave the data. And it was the first time we had looked at data together. It was the first time we had ever brought our students in to look at the data. And um, it was, uh, really an uncomfortable moment for us, but also probably um, a groundbreaking moment for us in terms of using data and really putting students at the heart of our work. Some of the specific things that we've worked on include a revised enrollment journey. Um, we're embarking now on guided pathways and this converting our 15 week terms to seven week sessions. Um, early on in achieving the dream and our work with the data, um, once we understood what was happening to our students, where they were getting stuck or stopping out, um, we redesigned our assessment and placement processes. We basically eliminated entrance, um, entrance testing or placement testing and created a learning commons that was designed right in the heart of our library to really destigmatize getting help academically. We created a model of integrated developmental education and tiered support. So uh, when we think back to our prior to joining Achieving the Dream, there was this sort of culture in our organization that um, really positioned developmental education as separate and not as good, uh, and the students in that way as well. Um, and actually physically, the developmental education building uh, was on one side of the street and the majority of our other academic buildings were on the other side of the street and our credit programming on the other side of the street. And there was often this um, notion that those students belong on the other side of the street or they're not welcomed on this side of the street. There was a sort of culture. We had to bust through that and, and it was tough work, but I think the work with Achieving the Dream helped us do that. And the data was the first place um, and, and area of focus. Um, we in 2018 launched a strategic plan focused on student, students. Uh, it was the first time in my uh, years at Western um, that we had student at the heart and, and that um, we were willing to make decisions around uh, a student-centered approach that addressed equity issues as well. And the strategic plan is called Experience 2025. It, it was launched in 2018, it still exists today. Uh, and we are truly focused on every student every day. 
in that work with our strategic plan, we laid sort of a foundation. So there were several things we needed in place to make sure that we could implement our plan. And we called those personal and organizational commitments. And one of our um, personal, personal and organizational commitments was to drive action through data intelligence. And um, that is happening in our organization, I believe. We have room to grow, of course, but we, as a result of our work with Achieving the Dream, I think are really solid and growing in that area. And then the final thing I'll mention here is uh, the creation of an equity integration plan. And uh, through that, uh, we have created an equity team. We have um, created four pillars of equity. We've defined what equity means at our, our organization and have a formal statement. Um, and it's really become something that our president and our senior leadership team uh, invest in. So we've seen growth in that area. Um, in our work, we're focused on access, inclusion, fairness, and systematic removal of barriers. And we're just starting to develop uh, an equity scorecard. So um, there are several goals in our strategic plan. So we have a, um, a set of student success measures that we call key results. And those are um, the data points where we start our conversations. But our technical college system has given us really robust Tableau dashboards. And so we've opened those dashboards up to our leaders in our college and our faculty. And through those dash dashboards, they're able to drill down um, at, down at the uh, program course level um, and then use equity filters to identify where um, we might have some barriers for our students. And in addition to that, our um, faculty and leaders can compare our performance against any of the other 15 technical colleges. So, so this has been a really powerful data system for us, but it's not enough just to put that data system in front of people. We had to teach them um, how to use it and why we would wanna use it um, when sometimes the data wasn't really um, fun to look at. And so we held, um, we, we still do, we hold annual data summits and we start with our key results. We've done data and donut sessions. We've um, created an equity data series when we were in the pandemic, um, as we were all, most of us were working remotely. And so that continued work there with the data as, um, as the why um, is important. We just this past year did our data summit focused on um, student voices. And so we were able to interview a couple dozen students all um, faced with challenges in, in navigating higher education. And they shared um, straight from the heart the things that have worked for them here at Western and the things that get in the way of their success. And it was a pretty powerful way to go beyond just the numbers on paper or the numbers in the dashboards to see the faces of the people and the tremendous barriers our students face. So um, as we look at our, our um, strategic goals, which I mentioned had a couple focused on um, equity, we are serving more students of color than ever. Um, we have moved from 12% of our credit programming uh, um, enro enrollments as students of color to 17%. And we did this just in four years. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. It actually um, has blown away our, our goal for our uh, strategic plan, which is um, set at 2025, achieving 15%. So we're a couple of percentage points beyond that. Uh, we have also had um, pretty good success in our work in removing equity gaps. We have decreased the course completion gaps um, by five percentage points um, since 2018. And we have decreased the graduation, third-year graduation rate, 12 percentage points since 2018. And um, I think as we embarked upon many of these changes, we had a lot of fear in our organization about um, what would happen if we're allowing more people to cross the street and be in our credit programs. Um, and we work really hard to explain that we're gonna surround them with support, that it will be integrated. We will help teachers and we will help students. And um, I think, you know, going from 12% of our students transitioning to credit programming to 46% transitioning from development, developmental ed to credit programming is pretty, pretty powerful statement about how seriously we take this. And um, I will say many of the things we're doing as a college um, are, are supported by our coaches. They continue to um, listen to us when we're struggling. They get up in front of our, our um, entire college and they speak. 
And um, they are the people that um, I think have helped us persist in this in this hard work. Um, and um, you know, I think our it's it's an honor for almost anybody in our institution to be able to be on the team that goes to the annual conference. Um, when we're looking for best practices, we we often look for the achieving the dream designation in the schools that we research. Uh, and so it's been just a powerful piece for us. And, and I've been honored to be part of that and to actually see some of the results that we're seeing uh, in our institution. Thank you so much, uh, Tracy. I really appreciate that presentation. And we hope you as an audience are seeing a few themes here. We selected uh, Coma to really talk about the work that they've done in the first three years as an Achieving with Dream institution. And we really appreciate the stories and the examples of where our colleges begin and where they wind up after staying with Achieving the Dream for a number of years. And Tracy, what a powerful image of having developmental education physically uh, separated from the rest of the institution. And I really like the way and appreciate the way you unpack the story around what it means to really integrate those students into the fabric of your institution. And you talk specifically about how that has informed your strategic plan, your equity scorecard, and identifying and decreasing equity gaps. I also want to thank you for the shout out for DREAM, which will happen in Chicago in February, and my colleagues will share a bit more about that. Uh, I'd like to move into kind of a question and answer opportunity for us with our two panelists, and I'm going to begin with Dr. Towner. We're also noticing that the chat function isn't working, so please feel free to enter any questions that you have in the Q&A, and we will do our best to get to them. Dr. Towner. Tahoma has been with ATD since 2018, and under your leadership, it has been building a culture of evidence, strengthening learning in classrooms, and providing holistic student supports to really position students for success. What would you say are two to three key factors that have been critical in making these important strides with your colleagues? Well, thank you, great question. Well, first is uh, we, had to, we had to admit that we could uh, improve um, and that the way in which we needed to improve could actually be achieved. Uh, and when I say improve, and I'm talking about specifically into the, with the area, area of retention, as well as uh, creating more access for students. And so again, going back uh, to the data, uh, the data that's put into the dashboard and asking those questions relative to what we were able to see based upon what we what we learned from the dashboard. You know, what, are our courses successful? Uh, are we actual, actually uh, being efficient with delivering the goods, the educational goods with the different groups that we have represented within our student body? And, um, and then convincing faculty uh, that you know, we all could do better. Uh, we all could become more efficient as an institution uh, from not only in the instructional process, but also in the support uh, of our students. Um, you know, if I think for too long, higher ed had a, an attitude of students had to just, the onus was on students, but we had to accept that many of our students are just a few days from high school or at the very most, a few, few weeks from high school. And so we need to provide it to support for those students that we are we're servicing. And uh, because if students are not successful, then ultimately we are not successful. So we looked at the data and saw that, uh, again, that we needed to provide those array of services that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then uh, the, even farther than that, uh, we had to get students to participate. Even though we had an array of services, that were available to students. We had to uh, nudge students. There was a lot of apathy out there, maybe some distrust by students. Uh, I, so we were able to you know, deliberately hire people um, or, and or encourage our current staff to reach out to students and provide, reach out to students, contact students, 
and provide students uh, with the with the resources that we had available. Whether it were, again, whether it was a device or whether it was uh, you know, tutoring, counseling, whatever it is that we needed, supplemental instruction, whatever it is that we needed, or if teachers needed to to uh, engage in different pedagogical um, uh, approaches to delivering the goods. And so we were able to do all of that after ATD opened our eyes. I'm say lastly, again, many times uh, we know we need to do something, but we don't feel that we need to do something. In this case, it was a creating access and also ensuring that our students had a likelihood, increased likelihood of succeeding. We, know, we knew that we needed to do that, but we felt that we probably couldn't do that. But the thing about being a part of Tune the Dream is, you know, everything that I say is everything that you're not doing, there's somebody in the world doing it. And so in our network, um, you know, there's other schools, I call them sister schools uh, that are similar to us. They're doing the very work that we're trying to do. So I think, I hope I answered your question. You did a great job answering the question, uh, and I'll circle back to you to hear a little bit more about how you're caring for your residential students in particular, because that is something that's special about Kahoma. Uh, Tracy, Western Tech has partnered with ATD for almost 10 years, and as I mentioned earlier, you're a leader college, uh, an award that we bestowed because of your uh, success in closing equity gaps and increasing uh, student completion and early momentum metrics. So as you mentioned in your talk, your focus and your priorities have progressed over the years as you've learned more about your students and really become more in tuned to what's happening in the national landscape, especially as you mentioned with developmental education reform. You also talked about how you really uh, focused more on equity and it's part of your strategic plan and you have an equity council and various other components with diversity, equity and inclusion. So what I would love for you to talk with our audience about is how you kind of made this progress and how you've accelerated your journey in some places to increase the opportunities for your students and also to support your faculty and staff in goals that have changed from developmental education reform to really increasing the completion metrics and those greater student success efforts. Thank you. I think the... Um earlier explanation I gave about um, driving action through data intelligence um, is one of those things that fuels our ability to identify where students struggle and where we might have institutional gaps in how we help students succeed. And so on an annual base, basis, we're committed to what we call a data summit. And so in the early years, we required our program chairs to attend those as we matured and felt that it wasn't just faculty's um, responsibility to look at the data and understand our students, we invited all of our, leader, our leaders, so our entire leadership forum, uh, and they uh, split up and um, at tables would look at the various data and try to make sense of it together. Uh, and so it was an effort in building data literacy, I believe, um, as um, we moved forward years uh, we felt we really had to bring the voice of the student in. And we were so inspired by um, the dream scholars and the stories they would tell at uh, the annual conference. And so we we were not, not trying to like duplicate that, but we really wanted to get the voice in. And, and we, we couldn't do as great of a job as Achieving the Dream does with them, but we were pretty good at, um, you know, having the student stories there. And not only at the data summits, having the student stories at our all college days, at our in-services um, the stories of our um, successful graduates in terms of um, our foundation and, and, and raising money for scholarships. So those student stories became a powerful way to help the entire organization understand the variety of students we, we serve and how so many of them are, um, struggle. We're in an area where we have um, some high schools that are um, the poorest in our state. And then we have some where we have um, considerable wealth. And so how do you do all that together? And how do you become that first choice for students, no matter uh, where they are, they come from? Um, the data, you know, I think the fact that we can dig into the data and we can look at um, race, ethnicity, or age, or 
uh, single parents or academically disadvantaged, economically disadvantaged. There's so many different ways to slice and dice the data. But as, as I said before, if we don't teach people how to use that, um, things can look things can look pretty scary when you, when you start to do that. And, and we talk about um, how does that help you either accelerate um, the things that you're doing well um, or translate those over to populations that aren't maybe doing as well? And then how do you figure out what the best practices are for addressing some of the results that are not so pleasant? And um, we, we believe in benchmarking and learning from other institutions. There's been several times where we've, we've worked with um, or called or um, stopped at their booth at the annual conference and learned from other institutions. So we're not too proud to, um, to do that. And, and, and we, we, we work hard to not think of ourselves as different from anybody else. Um, so, uh, you know, I think the, that commitment to understanding the data, because without that data, we, we're only guessing, we're only um, anecdotally sharing what we think is happening. And so to move the needle on, on the equity gaps, we, we have to dig in and truly understand the data. And, you know, I think, go ahead. I'm sorry, Tracy, I didn't want to cut you off. Finish your point. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we're, we're um, committed to attending both the data summits that Achieving the Dream put on and sending teams to the conference. And um, that's a way also to build capacity, build data literacy, expand the passion around, um, around equity and student success. I was actually going to say something very similar. I appreciate that both you and Dr. Towner really pointed out the power of peer learning, which happens when our colleges connect with one another. Uh, Dr. Towner mentioned sister institutions. And Tracy, you mentioned just walking up to colleagues at our data analytics or our dream convening. So we have a couple of questions from the audience. The first one is for you, Dr. Towner. You said that ATD opened your eyes. Can you give a little bit more information and clarity around how ATD did that for your institution? Sure. Well, I had, before joining HED, I, I was aware of the potential impact, positive impact to make. Um, and again, we're we're going along as an institution and always trying to increase our enrollment. Our enrollment was always it was it was always up and down. I mean, we could get it up a, you know, a couple semesters, then all of a sudden it would spike down and we knew that we were just guessing. We knew we, we had no sophistication, no proven verifiable uh, way of increasing enrollment and sustaining enrollment is more importantly, making certain that students were retained, that they persisted and that they completed. We were guessing there was no verifiable schematic or scheme to it. And so again, you, you know, here, here, achieving a dream allows you to see that you know through the data you can develop a a verifiable framework um, because you're able to see uh, where you're weak or low, or you're able to see where your strengths are. You're able to see how um, there are some shortcomings and areas such as, you know, those equity gaps we've been talking about, you know, in your enrollment, your courses, uh, your gender, your modalities, you can look at and you can see. And so when the reason I say it opens my eyes, we have this increase again this semester, the highest in the state. Um, and we know exactly how it happened. So we feel very confident that we will be able to sustain the increase, we may not be able to get another 22% increase, but we have no, we have very, I have zero doubt that we will be able to sustain a, another increase the fall, the coming fall semester or subsequent fall semester, because we're just, the data is right there. We, we'll look at the numbers and uh, we'll provide the resources for our students and uh, also equip our teachers. And the teachers feel the same way. The instructors feel the same way. Uh, because they were out of their wits end as well. You know, faculty members generally want their students to do well and to remain engaged. And whether they admit it or not, when students don't do well or when they disengage, 
they feel inwardly defeated. They may not always admit it, but now they see um, how they can also have a hand in determining the end result of making certain that students not only have access, but that they persist and complete and ultimately graduate. Thank you so much and congratulations on your enrollment increase. Uh, Tracy, this question is for you. Uh, you talked a lot about the work that you did with developmental education and a little about the trajectory that you've been on to increase equitable access. The question is, what is the impact or change that you're measuring currently if you began by looking at how do you um, integrate students from dev ed into credit bearing courses? What is the impact or the measurement for change that you're measuring now? And, and perhaps a little bit about how that's changed since you've been doing this reform work. Sure. So, um, you know, I think the, the early measurement of this um, was just looking at transition. So I mentioned that um, historically only 12% of our students were making that transition that started in, in um, developmental education. Uh, only 12% were transitioning to credit programming. And so, you know, it's, um, and it's, you know, it's pleasing to see the, the difference we're making, but we have to look further into that as well, because our, our, the, the conversation around the, the college, when we started that work, um, was, was a prediction that we would, our, our success rates would tank, that we would, um, lose a lot of students. And, um, we didn't see that happen. We we didn't see huge gains, um, but but we also didn't see the big drops that you would think if students weren't ready for us. Uh, and so um, as we get more mature in our use of data and our measurement and understanding how um, various interventions uh, impact student success, we're, we're looking at the equity. Uh, we're using the equity filters in our data. We're understanding that, yes, it, it could be um, really a, a, an effective approach for white students who are not impoverished, but what does that mean for an African-American student who is impoverished or, or a Hispanic student who is a, um, has English as a second language? So I think it's um, really beginning to look at the individual interventions and understand um, how they are helping, where they're helping. Um, when you're, when you're um, early on in your measurement, um, you, you develop uh, efforts and, and initiatives to make a change. Um, and you may not have a good solid understanding of how you know that that change is working. And so we're working really hard um, at setting up good evaluation plans, whether it be for our grants around this work or uh, in our conversations about comprehensive program and service evaluation. So getting better at measuring and um, I think we're finding out which things work um, and we're getting better at um, trying to put our resources in those places so that um, we can leverage the successes that we're having. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank uh, President Towner and Tracy for those uh, really thoughtful examples of what the transformation journey looks like on campus. I'm now going to invite my colleague, Dr. Lisa Stitch, who is the director of our post-secondary data partnership and also a strategic data and technology coach. And Lisa's going to tell us a bit about the foundational three-year experience and how we use that to set the stage for institutional transformation that is similar to what Coloma and Western have gone through. Dr. Stitch. Thank you so much, Dr. Parrish Trent. Um, I'm happy to talk with you about our foundations program. You know, it's really focused on the institutional transformation you've heard spoken so eloquently about um, by our speakers. It's a three-year intensive engagement um, that allows you various paths to continue with ATD after completing that initial three-year experience. The first year is focused on data and institutional assessment in identifying institutional performance gaps or equity gaps um, using the ICAT tool, which is the institutional capacity assessment tool and other data tools using both qualitative and quantitative data so that by the end of the first year, your institution can build your own action plan designed to focus on those two to three priorities or areas of focus that you want to really 
uh, attend to to advance your institution in years two and three. Your college receives two coaches who will help you explore your data, complete your assessments, build your action plans, and be the kind of coach that you need them to be, a critical thought partner, a content and process facilitator, a cheerleader, a listening ear, accountability partner. Our coaches are all trained in equity specifically and have a wide range of expertise. And they're assigned to you based on the information that you share with us in your application and in a coaching call that we hold to help confirm your top institutional priorities so that we're really aligning those coaches and their expertise with your priorities. You begin your three-year experience with a kickoff institute, which is an opportunity to meet your cohort in person, to begin looking at your data, and begin your planning to be part of that first year in the network, and to meet others that are doing the same kind of work that you are. You'll continue with this expert coaching, multiple on-site visits to your college, as well as access to the wealth of Achieving the Dream Network resources. Our goal is to bring our frameworks, expertise, and learnings to help you transform your institution in a way that fits your priorities, your culture, your challenges, and your students. And now I'm pleased to introduce to you Paula Talley, Executive Director of Program Development, and she's gonna tell you more about the wealth of supports that ATD can offer. Thank you, Lisa. And I just want to say I'm only going to begin to touch the surface of the ways that we can support you through your whole college transformation, you know, helping you uh, break down silos and align the efforts and initiatives at your institution. We do understand that at this point, maybe you're not ready to join the network, um, but we can actually begin working together. Um, we offer supports out of the network to help you begin accelerating your student success journey and your equity work. Um, as Lisa mentioned, in, in the three-year experience, we have this institutional uh, capacity assessment tool that's an extremely valuable resource for colleges to begin looking at and getting a head start on their data collection and helping them to assess um, your institutional culture and, and much more. And this can be done outside of the network before you begin to join or as you're exploring some of the capacities at your institution as you uh, undergo your student success journey. Um, we also offer, these are really valuable for institutions before and during, you know, the network. We offer opportunity assessments that will allow you to work with Achieving the Dream coaches ahead of the journey uh, of joining Achieving the Dream and help you identify strengths and areas for capacity building. Um, some of these include an equity policy audit. Um, we have a teaching and learning opportunity assessment, data and technology holistic student support, student parent opportunity assessment, a K-12 landscape partnership analysis, an OER opportunity assessment, and a pathways opportunity assessment. And these generally are two days on campus and can even be done virtually. They include focus groups with different uh, folks on your campus, including students, and the college receives, you'll receive a full report and recommendations. Um, we also have, I'm, I'm happy to see Arapaho here because we also have many colleges inside and out of the network that ask for additional support um, around topics um, such as equity-minded teaching practices or shortened academic terms, program health, and those can be, those types of topical areas can be done um, inside and out of the network. Um, and then after you complete that three-year experience in our network, um, you can actually dig deeper into these services that will support your student success work. Um, and, you know, some of the key areas we have, as mentioned in the opportunity assessments, we have teaching and learning, holistic student support, equity, data, and K-12. And was mentioned by our, our panelists earlier, you know, you're, when you're plugged in, um, every year you're plugged into this vibrant network of exceptional peer colleges. You heard Tracy say she looks for those colleges that have a Achieving the Dream um, notation on their, on their emails or their websites. Um, this is a peer learning network. So you're not in here siloed, just like we don't want silos within your campus. We don't want silos within this network. We really want you to come together to learn from each other and take away um, the excellent work that these amazing colleges in this network are actually doing. 
um, and, and then apply it in ways that fit your campus. Um, I am pleased to welcome back to the table, Dr. Uh, Monica Paris Trent. Thank you so much, Paula and Lisa, and thanks again to our panelists. Um, as we bring the webinar to a close, we want to just share a few more uh, pieces of information that you can certainly consider about the benefits of being a part of a network and tell you a little bit more about achieving the dream. We've been at this work for nearly two decades and actually are coming up on our 19th dream convening in February. And so in those nearly two decades of working with community colleges across the nation, as well as tribal colleges and universities, and we also connect with colleges in South Africa and New Zealand, we are consistently expanding our capabilities and our capacity to know who our students are and to respond to the ever-growing challenges that are involved in really ensuring that our nation's community colleges are equitable, they're student-centered, and they respond to the needs of a really diverse student population, helping them to earn credentials that have significant value and also lead to social and economic mobility. And so over the years, we have begun by looking at things like developmental education reform. We also continue to partner with guided pathways. And as we begin to think about well, what is on the horizon for community colleges and higher education, we've been talking a lot about access, momentum, mobility, equity, and community. And so as we continue to evolve as partners in this space, wanting to ensure that students can find us and we can find them, that we are retaining those students and ensuring that they are moving through the higher education process. At the end of that journey, being able to move into jobs that will provide living sustaining wages, ensuring that they're able to contribute to their communities and ensuring that there are equitable anti-racist opportunities for all of our students is vital to the work that we do. We recognize that our colleges are making tremendous progress and we're proud of our partnership with them. We also work really closely with our colleges to keep in mind what it means for our employees, our faculty and our students to have a sense of belonging, to create opportunities that are diverse and equitable and to maintain a strong and deep connection to the communities in which our colleges serve. So ATD is at the forefront of this expanded college access movement, and we know that access is meaningless unless students can complete their education and earn that credential. We also work with our colleges and our students to make sure that they finish and that they are really focusing on their academic and the personal needs of our students. And so our holistic student support work is foundational to the work that we do. We also work in the K through 12 space and thinking about what that pipeline looks like for colleges or from their local uh, high school providers. And we're also looking at what that outgoing student will be prepared to do. And so I wanna turn it over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Ryan Knight, who will close out the webinar and see if there are any other questions to be responded to. Dr. Knight. Thank you very much, Monica. We're um, so grateful that you've stuck with us during this hour, and it's been wonderful just to spend this time with you. Um, we've talked a little bit about the um, Dream Institute that's coming up um, next year, February 14th to um, 17, 2023. So um, we're hoping that you'll join us. We will finally be back in person in um, Chicago, Illinois. So it uh, won't be terribly warm, but we are looking forward to diving into many of the issues that we talked about during today's webinar. The themes for this year's Dream include access, momentum, mobility and community impact. So really looking forward to seeing you at DREAM if you're able to attend and we would be glad to welcome you there. Um, also what I'll share is uh, we have the ATD events page and I'll go ahead and drop um, a few links into the chat just so you can access this as well as some other resources. Um, but feel free to um, check back at the ATD events page periodically. Um, this is going to provide some updates on things like the PDP course that we offer to our in-network colleges. You can see a number of other areas of expertise there in the left-hand menu, but 
Um, hopefully you'll take advantage of that and um, be willing to join us for um, some, of the, some other additional ATD events that are coming up um, next spring. We have similarly um, an ATD resources page that I've linked to in the chat. Um, here, you're welcome to um, access and we encourage you to access any of the toolkits, the resources, the blog posts that we have um, posted for your benefit, um, as well as some of the learnings that we've had from our network colleges, uh, which again, you can use that left-hand menu there to, sort, to search based on um, the specific topic that you're looking for um, as well. And then finally, we just we would be glad to, to connect with you. We hope that um, you've enjoyed today's webinar. We hope that it's inspired you to um, just be interested in uh, reaching out and touching base on some of the ways that we're able to serve you. So um, the last link that's provided is where you can go to get a little bit more information about connecting with us. Um, and I've also provided the ATD network email, um, which is network at achievingadream.org. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time. I'm thrilled to um, have you and look forward to continuing to engage with you. So thank you very much. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks, everybody.